The gentleman Thank from Arizona is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I will try to swallow my rage when people not understand debt markets. Um, <laughs> all, you, you can't give us speeches about protecting full faith and credit and then with some of these questions. Um, the piece of legislation, does it create a new authorization for Treasury to prioritize or does it reconfirm the 1980s GAO memo? Uh, so, so if I understand your question correctly, uh, the legislation does nothing to modify existing authority uh, of the Secretary of Treasury to prioritize. So my understanding is what you're saying is the legislation actually does not change because the authority already, already exists. It does nothing more, particularly as we were just heard in some of the previous questions, it actually should provide a reassurance to international debt and, and, and domestic debt markets. Uh, so the, the legislation uh, contains a no inference clause to make it clear that Nothing in this legislation as a result of the directive authority provided uh, should be inferred as implying that there is not existing authority of the Department of Treasury to prioritize. When the Treasury issues a U.S. sovereign, does it issue a China bond compared to a domestic union bond or pension bond? Do, are they labeled differently? Uh, when issuing debt, they, they, they are not. Not along those categories. There are different types of debt that are issued, but not... Not along those categories. Does the piece of legislation change liquidity, the movement of bonds, the, the multi, multi-trillion dollar um, world debt market that's constantly moving this debt back and forth across the world? Uh, the legislation does nothing to modify that. What, does the legislation comprehend that if we actually engaged in some of the lunacy here of you'd produce a China bond and pay it differently than the bond over here in a pension system, what that would do to debt markets, U.S. Uh, credit ratings, uh, liquidity in the world. Uh, the legislation does not address or recognize a difference in uh, the type of bondholder. Does the legislation actually conceptually actually shore up belief in full faith and therefore interest rate stability in, um, the, in, in our bond auctions because as you have all know, we have actually seen um, coverage in some of our most recent issuances having lower and lower subscriptions. So, so I will defer to the bond markets on, on how they receive this, but, but what it does do is allow the uh, Secretary of Treasury to continue to meet those obligations. And once again, it, the legislation affirmatively communicates to the world debt markets that their money because we use that money to finance all these things, will actually stay priority, therefore maximizing efficiency in our costs and our interest rates and our ability to continue to issue debt. It ensures that the debt limit does not hinder that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.